I edit all of my photos on my iPad. And that means that I only have a few options when it comes to photo editing apps. Now the main one is Adobe Lightroom, and I've used that for many, many years. But if you saw my last video, I canceled my entire Adobe subscription. So I've been looking for a different alternative, and so far, that has been Capture One. So today, I wanna to walk through what that experience has been like using Capture One for the bulk of my photo editing on the iPad, and just show you some of the features. Now, Capture One is not the only alternative to Adobe Lightroom. You can also use Pixelmator or Darkroom, and I have tested those out before, but for right now, Capture One is the app that I wanna be using. It has a low monthly subscription fee specifically for the iPad app. You can also, if you want to, expand into a desktop, which I've not done at this point, so I do wanna caveat that this is only for the iPad version of Capture One, and it's really been a good experience for me so far. So today I wanna to walk through editing some photos, and the photos that I want to show you are some that were just test photos here around the house, mainly with my dog. I was able to test the Fuji 90 millimeter F2 lens. And these are just some photos around the house. I also got to use it on a couple of paid shoots and really, really enjoy that lens. That's kind of on a wish list for me. These photos are the first test images that I got using that. Literally, I got it from Lens Rental Borrow Lenses. I don't remember which one I got it from and immediately popped it on the camera and did some testing here around the house. So let's jump into actually using that and show you what that process is and how I was able to edit photos within Capture One. Opening up Capture One, you can now see the base interface. You have all sorts of different folders, albums, the ways that you can import photos on the left and then seeing which photos that you are looking at. So these are that group of photos that I wanna take a look at today. We're gonna to jump in and look at a few of them. This is my little puppy Chip, and this is, you can see, is already an edited photo and flagged as a star. So on the right-hand side, there's a star system that you can use to group photos or indicate which ones you like and which ones that you want to edit. I usually start off by putting one star on them if there's kind of a, that means I'm gonna edit the photo, right? And then I'll go later go back and use that star system in a little bit more detail to decide which ones I actually wanna keep long-term. Now, a lot of these were dark out the gate, but I was able to edit one. You'll see one here in a second. This is just Chip being a goofball, running in the backyard, having a blast, and we'll get to some of those in a minute. But now when you go back, you can filter and just say, okay, everything, all the photos that I saw as a one star, now you have them right here and can just go through just that set. So this is a little bit of your culling process. So as I jump in, this is one that I know I haven't edited yet. And here, the way that I would start this is with their styles. They have both styles and presets. These are a little bit different. Presets are kind of what we're used to in the Adobe Lightroom world. But over here, presets are more of individual settings. And styles are more of the overall look and feel. They provide some base ones here, a couple of different styles. And then thanks to Roman Fox, I purchased some of his styles for Capture One. So these are one-click edits that'll get you started. They're definitely not the finished product. So a couple different looks here. This one's punchy. You have more of a muted look on the other end of that spectrum. But for me, I today just wanna start with minimal. I think that's a good starting place. It gives me a general look and feel that I like to be able to, to work off of. Then moving down the left side, you have the next section, which is all about your crop and your keystone. You can adjust your sizing and cropping and get that framing to what you like. Moving on, you have the next section, and this is where the bulk of the edits are. Starting right at the top, I'll just kind of work top to bottom. What's great about Capture One is that they've worked with Fuji to put in the Fujifilm simulations. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use Classic Chrome. You have a bunch of options, but Classic Chrome is the one we're gonna use today and then you can continue to work on through your individual edits. So with white balance, this is going to be your Kelvin and tint. And the way that you adjust these is this little dial on the right hand side. So for the bulk of these edits, you can see as I kind of twist this and as I'm uh, kind of spinning the dial, I guess, it is adjusting the actual Kelvin or white balance of the image. So that's gonna be how you adjust most of the settings throughout this as I go through exposure and contrast and some of the other settings. They're all gonna be what you expect to see here. 
and really just dialing in the image to how you like it. You're gonna see as I open some of these up that they have some adjustments already. That's because I applied that style from Roman Fox. Again, that's a minimal style, so they're not gonna be adjusted a ton, but something to just get me started, and then I can go from there. And here with HDR, you're gonna be highlights and shadows. I think this could use a little bit of a boost in the shadows, but I don't wanna to lose too much of that depth in the black. So I'm gonna pull that back down and just get that dialed in a little bit. And then again, clarity, Roman has this uh, pulled back and I like to bring that back up more to a neutral spot with this photo. And then you do have dehaze, which I'm not gonna use, but this next one is powerful. So this is the colors. You can then dial in individual colors. So, so to start, I'm gonna adjust some of the greens and as you can see, the bushes behind chip, as I move these dials with hue and saturation, I'll kind of tweak both of them and just show you, go a little bit extreme here and just see how that works. Now I am gonna pull those back in reality and make those a little bit more subdued and then also adjust some of the oranges because right now I think the orange from the wood is a little bit too bold and so I'm gonna adjust that to my liking. And then the last setting is vignetting. This is going to be your vignetting. You can do some bright vignetting and brighten things up, or you can also darken that and bring in the focus to kind of whatever's in the center of the image. And that's how I'm gonna, that's how I generally like to use vignetting. So I'll do a little bit of that here. Just checking some before and afters, you can see kind of the full adjustment of what we've done. Then I can copy those and you can individually select which settings that you want to copy over. So this is going to be for bulk editing. If you want to uh, kind of process a bunch of images that were taken in similar lighting. So, if, well, that one's not going to be the same lighting. So we'll go back to this one and now I can paste those edits onto this image and get a similar look and feel. You will probably need to do again, little tweaks here and there, but you're going to get a, a pretty close look and feel uh, across images by being able to use that. Now, if we do go over to this image and we're not going to go through all of the settings because I've already done most of the edit on this one, I want to show you the sharpening because particularly this is a difference with Capture One compared to Adobe Lightroom for Fuji users. So as so I zoom in here, you can see the noise. This was a darker image and needed to be boosted a little bit. But as I adjust these settings and things, it's not getting wormy. It's not getting kind of artifacts in it that you're probably used to seeing in Fuji files adjusted in Lightroom. They have just worked more closely with Fuji here in Capture One to be able to adjust that in a more smooth way. This image in particular is still pretty noisy and I can adjust some of that, both the sharpening and the noise reduction to try and adjust some of those things, but it's still gonna be there, but it's not artifacting. It's not becoming wormy and kind of squiggly like it does when I've done that in Adobe Lightroom. And again, if I copy those edits out, I can go to one of these darker images and you can see how goofy this dog is if I apply that. This one looks like it's a little bit out of focus, so we'll jump to the next one. This is a little bit different. He was trying to come up and play with me. And you can see just, you can even see my own reflection in his eye, but really like this image because it had his eye in focus but maybe just needs a couple of little tweaks to make this where I would want it. So again, copying over, but not using exactly the same settings, adjusting some of that, that grain and how that renders, just so I get the image to where I want it to. But once I have all of the images edited in the way that I want to, I can come back, select all of them and hit export. There's a bunch of different export settings and I'm gonna start by just adjusting the name. These are all of chip. So we'll go with chip as our name of these files. And then as I hit export, it is going to take a minute to process all of those, but then will give me another window of where I want to save those images. So if I wanna save to files or to my photos app, which is what I'll do here, so that we have those to use in, in whatever way we want to. While this has been a great experience so far using Capture One for the iPad, there are some cons and drawbacks to using this currently. And those include not having local edits. So not having brushes or radi uh, radial gradients or other things like that are kind of a drawback for me. That was something that I very much enjoyed in the Adobe world, being able to use my Apple Pencil to very, to very closely interact with the photo that I was editing. 
And that meant that I felt like I was painting on the image a little bit and much more connected to the work. That's a slight drawback here because you aren't getting to interact directly. You're using the dials on the sides, you're using the settings on the other side, and that is a great user interface. I actually really enjoy that, but the lack of pencil support to be able to do stuff directly on the image uh, is a little bit of a difference and something I've had to get used to. So because of that, I've had to also include the addition of Affinity Photo into my workflow. I didn't highlight that here today, but that is something that I am also testing out and will be making a video soon on kind of what that workflow looks like because that's where I've been able to accommodate some of those other things that I wanna be doing here in Capture One, but haven't been able to do so. Now my hope for the future is that Capture One adds a lot of these features. This is stuff that's available in their desktop app, but hasn't been ported over to the iPad yet. So they have the, the code and the feature sets and they know kind of how to utilize some of those things. It's just a matter of putting them into the iPad experience and hopefully that comes down the line. And another thing that Capture One does that I didn't touch on here today is tethering. Now that's something that I haven't done myself and so I wanna do some testing with that and share a video here. So make sure and hit subscribe for when that video comes out because I will definitely be sharing that experience, getting to test that out, figure out what that means, how does that impact my workflow when I'm actually making some photos, doing headshots, other things like that. I have some ideas around how to utilize that and I'm really excited to share that with you. So hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. Is this an app that you're gonna be using moving forward in your workflow? And in the meantime, let's go make some stuff.